So remember, most of the elements are silvery grey metals or colourless gases. So how on earth do we get the huge range of colour you can see in paints and ceramics in the world around us? And that comes about by actually combining different elements. And in the case of, of colours in glass and paints, things like that, it quite often is where you're combining an element with oxygen. So cobalt and oxygen produces amazing blue pigments. Um, Copper and oxygen is black or red. Um, but how on earth does the colour actually happen? Well, colour really is just light interacting with the cloud of electrons that is around each atom or compound. It's, it's as sort of simple as that. So the electrons ultimately are controlling the colours we see. The photons bouncing off. They absorb some of the light and then reflect the other light and that's the colour we see. Sometimes colour is not just about combining different elements together to produce a particular colour. Sometimes you can make a colour using different size particles. And in the case of uh, these three tubes here, we've actually, they all contain particles of uh, silver. And the particles are different sizes. They're very, very small particles. They're called nanoparticles. So they're ridiculously small. And you've got one that's a kind of yellow colour, one's blue, and one's a sort of purple colour. And that is just because they are different sizes of um, particles. And so they scatter the light differently. They absorb different wavelengths of light, so you produce different colours. And the blue colour, you might think, well, that's a nice blue colour. What use is that? That's the same blue that is used in pregnancy test kits. They use uh, silver nanoparticles for pregnancy test kits. And then you get the same effect with gold. Very, very finely, fine particles of gold will produce uh, a, 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 almost like a ruby red colour is in the sort of big vases up there. Colour really is all about uh, objects reflecting certain wavelengths of light. And we've got a, an item here which actually does almost exactly the opposite. It's called Vanta Black, and it's it's a particular form of carbon. Carbon's a very dark element, sort of black, but uh, it absorbs almost all the light that is shone upon it. So it's darker even than any shadows that it might cast. It absorbs, uh, yeah, 99.96% of the light that hits it. So in incredibly dark. So those things look black. But other things, if they reflect all of the light, they look white or silver. And that's why silver actually looks silver, because effectively it just reflects almost all of the, the photons, all of the light that hits it. It's the most reflective element of all. Carbon is the least reflective, silver is the most reflective. And all the others are somewhere in between. So if elements are sort of heated, have an electrical charge sort of pass through them, they glow with particular wavelengths of light, and quite often those will actually be very distinct uh, uh, wavelengths. It's like a coloured barcode, and in the case of uh, the inert gases, which is helium, neon, argon, krypton, and xenon, they produce very, very distinctive sort of colours, and you can split those up into, into individual little lines using a spectroscope, and that's true for every element when it's heated. It will produce its own unique coloured barcode and so we can look across the distant universe even almost to the beginning of the the universe and we can look at the colors the the, the barcodes emitted by an ancient star and we can read that and say oh yes that contains silicon or aluminium whatever so it's an amazingly effective tool used by astrophysicists astrophysicists are actually using this to work out the chemistry of things that are billions of light years away, which is amazing.